Hello, Ender Sword here again, this time with a replay from the Silver League. This was sent in to us by Zeif, the Protoss player here on the right-hand side of the map. And his opponent on the left-hand side, or sinister side, is going to be the Terran player Wild Bill for today. A uh, few people have asked me, how do I send a replay in to you? And the easiest way to do that is actually send me a PM either here on YouTube or on TeamLiquid.net, where my username is also EnderSword. Just send me a PM with a link to your replay up on one of those uh, replay sites, and that's the easiest way to get it to me as opposed to actually trying to send a file directly or anything like that. Try and make sure your replay is under 20 minutes of game time. I am still limited to 15 minutes on YouTube, and I'd rather not split the videos into two parts and I prefer not to be fast forwarding through certain parts of the game or anything like that. Uh, so a little over is okay, but about 20 minutes is a good guideline. So the three things that I'm going to be looking at during this game are number one, scouting, and how you can use scouting information to kind of eliminate what your opponent cannot be doing to help you shape a picture of what they are doing as opposed to just seeing something and trying to guess what they are doing based on what you're seeing. The second thing I'm going to look at is production. It's making sure that you're actually producing out of the facilities that you have and that you're building things in an order that allows you to logically produce out of them that you're not spending way too much money at one point, not enough at another, overbuilding production, underbuilding production, things like that. And the third thing that we're going to look at, which really dominates this game, is going to be harassment management. Uh, it's one thing to be able to deal with and stop harassment itself, but it's quite another to actually compound the problem by voluntarily harming yourself during harassment by forgetting to do key things or actually pulling all your workers, delaying everything, and just losing a lot of mining time that you don't have to mine, uh, that you don't have to lose, as well as losing production time that you don't have to lose. So um, we see pretty normal things going on here. Obviously, gateways, cyber, everything normal over in Protoss land. The probe over here was kind of on autopilot and ran into a wall. That does happen, obviously, when Terran walls off. Try and keep an eye on your scouting worker as it's about to approach a base, particularly in this case where he knows he's in the last one because he's gone to the other two. Just poke your attention over when you see on the mini-map he's getting close. There may be a decision that you can quickly make. There was a risk in getting trapped down here that he would get picked off by a couple of Marines before he even had time to react. I do like pulling over to this area. It allows him to use this later as well as scout to see whether or not an expansion is going down there. Wild Bill makes a little mistake in letting this probe in, and it does get to see that factory um, instead of just being kept out by the supply depot. So that gives us our first little piece of scouting information that is really vital. Because of this factory, we don't know what Wild Bill is going to do, but we do know what he's not going to do. So we can't say whether he's going Hellions tanks, we can't say whether he's adding a starport or what's going on. We can say that he's not doing a one barracks fast expand. We can say he's not doing a five barracks all in. Can say that it's pretty unlikely he's going to add three barracks and hit us with a lot of marauders. Things like that. So you can eliminate ideas that your opponent cannot be doing by what you see and that will eventually help you shape what is actually going to be going on. Over here we went for a one gate uh, row well play and he's getting an observer out but the gateway itself is just kind of sitting idle now it is turning into a warp gate but you'll see that all this attention is over here on the stalkers uh, that's kind of what he's got selected and what he's looking at. But as this turns into a warp gate, it's just kind of sitting there. You just had this technology done, and he actually chronoed to make sure it was out quickly, and then he's not using it at all. So it's wasted chronos on that technology, and it's vastly wasted production time. So while I do agree with 
this part, you can scout with those stalkers to try and see what's going on. They can likely get away since there's not going to be any concussive shell marauders at that base at this time based on what we scouted. Um, we're just not producing anything out of this. So Zeif should be a little concerned that all he's got is two stalkers in a sentry when we know that there's at least this many marines out here, likely in addition to something else. Now I'll pause just now for a moment uh, to note that this observer, which we got that one robo out and then got that observer right out of there, uh, which was done a little slow, but it at least got out there and it's over here near the enemy's base, but it's not looking in the enemy's base. He's not really concerned about what's inside there. But there's tons of information that could have been picked up if he pokes his head over this little wall and sees what's going on. The Marines we know about, but Seif doesn't know actually what building this is. He knows that there's a tech lab from those stalkers poking up, but they couldn't quite see what was going on here. He thought it was a factory from earlier, but obviously they've switched. So by poking up here just a tiny bit to about this point, he'd be able to see that this is producing something. And I'm not sure how many people are completely aware of how this works. But when that's suppressed, obviously the starport is making something. But also the tech lab itself gives an indication. A red light is on, this will turn, and the piston will move in and out in a different way than it is when it's idle. It'll be frozen and then do something. This is spinning. And uh, basically change different than this, which is just kind of slowly going a yellow light and no spinning. So the moment he came over the ridge and would see this, he would know full well that there was a banshee out here and that the banshee had or was researching cloak. And he would have known that at about the 7 minute and 20 mark. Could have had about 40 to 50 seconds to prepare for this Banshee coming in. Could have pulled the stalkers into the mineral line before it actually got there. And could have prevented a lot of damage. This Banshee racks up a ton of kills. But on top of the kills we have this. These probes were pulled over here at 8 minutes and 20 seconds. The Banshee is going around being cloaked and eventually gets picked off by stalkers. Good stuff after getting about, uh, I think, 14, yeah, 13 kills. 12 kills, actually, one was lost over here. But uh, it takes until 9 minutes and 20 seconds before those are sent back to the mineral line, and by that time, another Banshee's there. So, in addition to the 12 workers killed by the initial Banshee, there was a minute of voluntary lost mining time, maybe 50 seconds, because he had to pull away initially, but about 50 seconds to a minute of voluntary lost mining time, which is hundreds of minerals, and is actually much worse than losing a couple of workers at this point in the game. You want to try and avoid that sort of mistake when harass is going on. Similarly, this, with your production facilities just not doing anything, you don't want that going on. You often get this happening with players too, that, oh, I need detection and a photon cannon, but then they just put it wherever. This is not a good position for this, uh, this structure at all. It's not going to cover this area. The Banshee could still sneak in, and it's range 6, still going to be able to pick off these probes with this over here. The only thing it's really covering is maybe probes that aren't even on this gas. So it's not really useless. It, it is really useless. It was just a waste of those 150 minerals that could have been uh, better spent elsewhere. So when the Banshee does come back, that turns out that it doesn't really matter that this photon cannon's over here. He's still going to rack up kills, nine kills there so far, and there's nothing there. He originally moved here with some stalkers in anticipation that, hey, the Banshee might come back, but didn't actually react to it. Even when the Banshee drifted down south, he didn't react to it or pull anything over. 
When it drifts back up, he goes to where it was instead of where it's going. Try and have these forces split, control them separately, be sending them to separate areas, and just park a couple. Two stalkers will take care of that as it comes in. So just park them there, and you've got your detection. You're okay. Don't move everything together in this one control group and have to be in this place, this place, this place. He could have just as easily lowered you up there with your entire army then hit the front. There's a million things that they could do. You don't want to just be moving your entire army's one chunk just to defend against a single banshee. I've also got this observer there that could actually park itself right on this thing's head and you'd be completely aware of when it was going to move in. You can see on the mini-map and you would be able to see whether or not it would move in when you've got that observer right, right on it and absolutely shadowing the thing. Here again, production is just not happening. The robotics facility has been there all game and has not produced a unit outside of these observers. You just can't be investing in that sort of technology that early if you don't actually have a plan on using it. It just can't be sitting there idle. Right now we do see some probe production going on. However, this has been very lax again as he's been distracted by other things and the Banshee itself poking back in. Reasonably making probes now, but they could be a lot higher. He should be chrono boosting these out to try and recover his economy. There's one there. Uh, but we've got this almost full of chrono boost. That should be going the entire time. Uh, to really get those out, but then we get a chrono boost on a blank one, chrono boost on a blank one, nothing being produced, we're just kind of wasting it. Uh, there's better ways to recover than that, and you want to make that your top priority to get your economy back online very quickly. Uh, the army down here is a little bit pathetic at this point. It's kind of slowly been added to over the course of the game, but unfortunately the economy at this point just isn't uh, supporting anything that large. There's really no tech to speak of. No path has been chosen. Uh, robotics facility is there, but again, no units have really been made out of it that are kind of techy in nature. And you're just going to lose this gateway against uh, Terran fight. I don't even care what he's making over here. This is losing to it. It's almost no possible Terran composition is going to lose to just straight gateway units like this. So you've got to be trying to catch up in some way when that sort of thing happens. And that usually means tacking to something, taking a shot on something, getting DTs out, something like that, that will actually help you try and mount a comeback. The final attack comes in here. Handle the low wrong. Obviously, the zealots are behind, stuck behind, and have to walk around their own forces before engaging. Try and set that up so you've got obviously your zealots in front, but in this case, it is going to be crushed pretty much no matter what, especially with the two tanks there. And Zeif does lead the game. Uh, but the key points to take away from this are one, the scouting information could have at several points in the game told him that this was a threat. Either Hellions were a threat, Hellions or Hellion Drops were a threat, Banshees were a threat, or something. We knew that it wasn't going to just be quick soul bio that was coming out of there. And even if it was, Zyph wasn't even prepared for that. There just wasn't enough units out to actually deal with any form of attack let alone a harassing form of attack like this. We could have known that it was cloak coming out in about 40 to 50 seconds ahead of the time that it came by sending that observer directly and really valuing that scouting information as opposed to being passive with it. The reaction to harassment, though, was real, the real killer in this. On top of everything that was actually killed, he could have done a lot better by making sure that things weren't idle around the map and continuing to mine with them. So that does make a big difference, and obviously continuing with production makes a huge, huge difference, as well as continuing with your tech path. You're not going to catch up 
by taking the status quo. You have to advance if you're going to catch up, or you have to do something tricky to catch up, and that just wasn't done in this game. So I hope uh, these points are helpful, and thanks for watching, everyone.